This is your Buck News. Hello and welcome to Buck News. I'm Morgan Peffer. And I'm Ethan Hooper. The Black History Intercollegiate Consortium is an organization of higher education institutions in the Tri-County area. Its purpose is to enhance racial harmony between the universities and the communities, provide opportunities, and celebrate the achievements of African Americans throughout the year. Buck News reporter Christy Porter has more. the Black History Intercollegiate Consortium. We had attendees from Trident Tech, Charleston Southern University, MUSC, and the Citadel. They all came out to honor Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. and we spoke with some of the CSU honorees. It just means that I'm being awarded, not really and truly like for what I have done, but what I'm representing more than anything. Uh, I am doing something that's bigger than myself and I am proud to receive this award uh, just for the meaning behind it. I am so humbled by this award. I, I know I've taught my students the importance of the civil rights uh, movement and Dr. Dr. Martin Luther King's service to the country um, and to get this award is just overwhelming. Attention all sweet tea lovers. When was the last time you had those pearly whites examined? You can now get a dental screening at the MUSC College of Dental Medicine by senior students at absolutely no cost. Screenings are available Monday through Thursday, January 9th through April 5th from 4.20 to 6.30 p.m. All patients must be at least 18 years old. No appointment necessary. The Singleton Baseball Complex is currently under construction. It is named in honor of Sharonda Coleman Singleton, one of the nine victims in last year's Emanuel AME Church shooting, and mother to CSU baseball player Chris Singleton. The complex will include a memorial plaza to recognize CSU baseball players who became members of the school's Athletic Hall of Fame or played in Major League Baseball. The plaza will also include a Love is Stronger memorial. The facility is expected to open in the spring. The Light Sea Chapel Auditorium will be up and running for its first chapel service on March 1st. If you are looking for ways to earn your chapel credits in the meantime, the first alternate chapel is Saturday, February 11th at Burke High School. But if you can't make it, there is another one Wednesday, February 22nd in the Whitfield Center for Christian Leadership. There are dozens of others you can find at the bottom of the chapel page of the CSU website. CSU will hold our next epic Bible teacher training. It will prepare area Bible teachers to teach Lifeways, explore the Bible literature, just weeks before the start of the new quarter. The seminar will be taught by CSU professor Dr. Ed Gravely and will begin at 8 a.m. on Saturday, February 11th. The class will be held in WCCL 110 and all participants are asked to bring a Bible and a writing utensil. If interested, RSVP today at the email or phone listed below. And here's Aaron Bailey with sports. Hi, I'm Aaron Bailey and this is your CSU Sports Update. After taking over for Jamie Chadwell, new CSU football head coach Mark Tucker had a press conference to introduce himself to university and the local media. One of his first priorities is just a few weeks away, which is signing day for recruits. Although there was a change in coaches, Tucker does not see a change with incoming recruits. The relationships, and as difficult as some of that is, some young men that uh, they gravitated to a particular coach. There's young men that I've been recruiting that are very happy. They don't know what they would do if I weren't, that if I did not have this opportunity. So I have to say that those things exist with other young men as well. But it's our job right now, our entire weekend is intact. And everybody that I've spoken with, which is everybody, uh, feels very good about it. We are all very excited to see what Mark Tucker does with this great team as they prepare for the 2017-18 season. It's a big weekend in CSU men's and women's basketball, as the men took on Presbyterian and Longwood while the women came back against Radford. For the men, Christian Killing had his second career double-double and Javis Howard scored 14 points, shooting seven for seven to help the team overcome Presbyterian. Freshman Christian Killing had another stellar performance against Longwood scoring 28 points. He's leading the team in points per game at 16.5 and averaging six rebounds per game. The Bucks dominated Presbyterian 73 to 52 and then won at home against Longwood Lancers 76 to 61. The Lady Bucks had a second half comeback against the first place Radford to win by double digits. They forced 10 turnovers in the first quarter and ended the game outscoring Radford 15-6 for the win. The final score was 57-45. to 
The men's next games are at High Point on January 26th and then at home against Gardner-Webb on the 28th, while the CSU women's basketball team take on Gardner-Webb at home on the 24th. So come on out and support your CSU Bucks. That was your CSU Sports Update. I'm Aaron Bailey. Go Bucks! Start boxing up those winter clothes. We are looking for some relatively warm temperatures this week. Monday, there is a chance of rain. Tuesday and Wednesday, expect clear skies. Then, for the rest of the week, partly cloudy. The high of the week will be at 72 and the lows in the high 50s. If it isn't cold enough for you outside, how about some ice time inside? The South Carolina Stingrays have three home matches this weekend, Friday through Sunday. You can find times and information on the Stingrays official site. The first meeting for the Student Leadership Academy was this past week, where Dr. Troy Hall, COO of the South Carolina Federal Credit Union, was a guest speaker. Hall, a 2011 MBA graduate of CSU, explained the role of character and leadership. He said, if a leader has skills without character, they are a synthetic leader. Thank you to Troy Hall for your wise words. Students, if you spend most of your time on campus and need to take a break from studies, be sure to follow the Charleston Southern University Campus Recreation Department as they have an incredibly helpful Twitter account. You'll find information on intramural sports, gym and pool hours, and updates on recreation classes basketball, four-on-four -four flag football, and the Buccaneer Classic Basketball Tournament is still open to register. So to Ever wonder where the song, I'm So Glad I Go to CSU, came from? It's based on an African-American spiritual. CSU music professor Dr. Nicholas Holland brought the arrangement from the University of Memphis, where his staff introduced it in 2004. And that's your Buck News for this week. To submit news, photos, or video, email bucknews at csuniv.edu. Have a great week and go Bucks!